In this video, we will learn about the procedure of catheterization. Catheterization of bladder involves introducing a narrow tube through the urethra and into the bladder to allow a continuous flow of urine into the drainage receptacle. There are different types of catheters. Catheters can be intermittent or indwelling catheters. With intermittent technique, a single-use straight catheter is introduced for 5 to 10 minutes, just long enough to drain the bladder. On the other hand, an indwelling or Foley catheter is retained for longer period of time in the bladder by the means of small balloon that anchors it against the bladder neck. So the catheter remains in place until the client is able to void completely and voluntarily. For male patients with enlarged prostate, we use a special type of catheter which is called as Coody tip catheter. This catheter has a curved tip and is less traumatic during the insertion. Size of Foley catheter is described using French scale system. So catheter size can vary anywhere from 6 to 26. However, in adult females, preferable size is anywhere from 12 to 16 and in males, it can go from 14 to 18. Always follow physician's orders and your nursing assessment to determine the size of the catheter required to be inserted. Now let's review the steps of this procedure. Before you do this procedure, make sure you do have physician's orders. After ensuring the privacy of your client, make sure you explain the procedure and answer any questions the patient may have. Also assess the patient for conditions like distension of bladder, erythema, redness, tenderness, any foul odor or drainage in the perineal area after wearing gloves. Perform hand hygiene and make sure that the bed is in the appropriate working height. Now facing the client, clear the bedside table and arrange your equipments. Raise the side rails on the opposite side of the bed and lower side rail on the working side. Place waterproof pad under the client and assist the client to the supine position with thighs slightly abducted. For male clients, drape under the trunk with the bath blanket and cover the lower extremities with the bed sheet exposing only genitalia. Wearing disposable gloves, wash the perineal area with soap and water if needed and make sure it's dry. Remove and discard gloves and perform hand hygiene. Position lamp to illuminate the perineal area or you may ask assistant at this point of time. Open the package containing drainage system, place drainage bag over the edge of the bottom bed frame and bring drainage tube up between the side rails and mattress. Open the catheterization kit according to the directions, keeping the bottom of the container sterile. Place the plastic bag that contained kit within the reach of work area to use as a waterproof bag in which used supplies can be disposed. Apply sterile gloves. Organize supplies on the sterile field. Open inner sterile package containing catheter. Pour sterile antiseptic solution into correct compartment containing sterile cotton balls. Open packet containing lubricant. Remove specimen containers and pre-filled syringe from the collection compartment of tray and set them aside on a sterile field. Before inserting an indwelling catheter, test the balloon by injecting fluid from the pre-filled syringe into the balloon port. However, you want to check the hospital policy for this as some of the hospitals do not use this as best practice anymore. Lubricate 12.5 to 17.7 cm for men. Afterwards, you want to apply the sterile drape. For males, there are two methods for draping and depending upon the preference. First, apply the drape over the thighs and under the penis without completely opening fenestrated drape. Second method, apply the drape over the thighs just below the penis, pick up fenestrated sterile drape, allow it to unfold without touching any sterile objects and drape it over the penis with fenestrated slit resting over penis. This maintains the sterility of the work area. Now place the sterile tray and the contents on the sterile drape and open the specimen container. For male patients, if the client is not circumcised, retract the foreskin with non-dominant hand, grasp penis at shaft just below glance, retract urethral meatus between thumb and forefinger, 
maintain non-dominant hand in this position throughout the procedure. With sternal dominant hand, pick up cotton balls with forceps and clean penis. Move in a circular motion from urethral meters down to the base of the glands. Repeat cleansing three more times using a clean cotton ball each time. Cleansing reduces a number of microorganisms at urethral meatus and proceed from the area of less contamination to the most. Dominant hand remains sterile. Now pick up the catheter with the glove dominant hand 7.5 to 10 cm from the catheter tip. Hold end of the catheter loosely coiled in the palm of the dominant hand. For male patients, lift the penis to position perpendicular to the client's body and apply light retraction. Ask the client to bear down as if voiding and slowly insert the catheter through urethral meatus. Advance catheter 17 to 22.5 cm in adult or until the urine flows out of the catheter. If resistance is felt, withdraw the catheter and do not force it through the urethra. Some hospitals will recommend you to go all the way up to the bifurcation point. When the urine appears, advance the catheter further 2.5 to 5 cm. Do not use any force against the resistance. Lower penis and hold the catheter securely in non-dominant hand. Place end of the catheter in urine tray and inflate balloon if an indwelling catheter is being used. Make sure to reposition the foreskin. If you don't reposition, the condition paraphimosis can cause, which can be urological emergency situation. Collect the urine specimen if needed. Fill the specimen cup or jar to the desired level by holding the end of the catheter over the cup with your dominant hand if prescribed. Allow bladder to empty fully unless institution policy restricts. Check institution policy before beginning catheterization. Always monitor client's condition and vital signs and bleeding symptoms. Inflate balloon fully per manufacturer's recommendation and then release the catheter with non-dominant hand and pull gently. Attach the end of the indwelling catheter to the collecting tube of the drainage system. Drainage bag must be below the level of bladder. And attach bag to bed frame. Do not place the bag on the bed side rail. For male patients, secure catheter tubing to the top of the thigh or lower abdomen with penis directed towards chest. Allow for slack so that the movement does not create tension on catheter. Anchoring catheter to the lower abdominal area or to the thigh reduces pressure on the urethra, thus reducing the possibility of tissue injury. Once the procedure is complete, assist the client to the comfortable position, wash and dry the perineal area as needed. Remove gloves and dispose of equipments, drapes and urine in proper receptacle. Perform hand hygiene, palpate bladder, ask the patient about any discomfort, and also observe character and amount of urine in the drainage bag. Ensure that no urine is leaking from the catheter or tubing connections. After procedure, make sure you do the documentation. We hope you enjoyed learning this procedure. Stay tuned for more clinical videos and subscribe to our channel. Hello nurses and nursing students. I hope you guys enjoyed learning this skill. Now what's next? Let's just practice some NCLEX style questions associated with this procedure. Here is the first question on your screen. The nurse is caring for a client with urinary catheter that has been bypassing all day. The nurse has irrigated the catheter as per the healthcare provider's prescription, but urine continues to bypass. What should the nurse do next? Here are your four options. Think for yourself which one is the answer before I discuss. All right, guys, let's just look at option number A. Initiate a continuous bladder irrigation system. What do you guys think? That is incorrect. The nurse needs a prescription to do this and it may not be necessary at this point of time. Option number B, remove the urinary catheter and leave it out. That is incorrect. The nurse would need a prescription 
to keep the catheter out and removing it will not solve the problem. Look at the option number C, insert a smaller size catheter. That is also incorrect because this will exacerbate the bypass problem, not resolve it. Now you guys know this is the answer, but let's just review it. Change the urinary catheter and that is correct. This is the most appropriate action after irrigation with no results because mucus could be blocking the catheter tip and a new catheter will be needed. Good job. All right, guys, now let's just look at the next question on your screen here. The nurse recognized that the following clients are most likely to require an indwelling urinary catheter. Select all that apply. So I know it's your favorite chart of question. Here are the five choices. Use true false strategy, pause the screen and think for yourself which one is the answer. All right, guys, let's just discuss option number A, the client experiencing a postpartum hemorrhage. And that is correct. The client experiencing postpartum hemorrhage will likely need a urinary catheter to have an accurate measurement of the urine output. This is an emergency and accurate assessment data is important. Okay guys, let's just look at option number B. And that is correct. The client undergoing a laparotomy and bowel resection will likely need a catheter inserted for bladder decompression preoperatively and to prevent urinary retention postoperatively. Let's just look at option number C here. The client experiencing urinary retention due to paralysis. What do you guys think? And that is correct because the client experiencing urinary retention due to paralysis will require a catheter as they are unable to void independently. Look at the option number D. The client with urinary tract infection and diabetes mellitus. What do you guys think? That is incorrect guys because the client with urinary tract infection and diabetes mellitus does not require a catheter and inserting one may increase the risk for further infection. Let's just look at option number E here. The client experiencing an exacerbation of Crohn's disease. What do you guys think? That is also incorrect because there is no indication that a client experiencing an exacerbation of Crohn's disease would require a catheter. So what's your answer? Your correct answer is A, B and C. All right, now let's just move on to the next question here. The nurse is caring for a client with continuous bladder irrigation following transurethral resection of prostate surgery yesterday. Which assessment finding would be most concerning to the nurse? Here are your four options. Pause your screen and see for yourself which one is the answer. All right, guys, let's just discuss. A. Presence of blood clots in the drainage from the catheter. What do you guys think? A is incorrect because blood clots are expected for first 24 to 36 hours post-op and it's not a case of concern right now. Option number B, 900 ml of bright red blood in urinary catheter bag. Now think for yourself. Option B is correct guys because large amount of bright red blood in the urine can indicate hemorrhage and that would be the cause for concern and would be considered as an emergency. Let's just look at option number C, fluid outflow from CBI greater than the inflow. What do you guys think? Actually, this is incorrect because it is normal and expected for the outflow of CBI to be greater than the inflow. Given that the urine output becomes the part of continuous bladder irrigation outflow. Let's just look at the option number D, the client complaining of painful bladder spasms. And guys, that is incorrect. While the bladder spasms can be distressing, it is not an abnormal finding and can be treated with antispasmodics and relaxation techniques. I hope you guys are still enjoying. Let's just move on to the next scenario here. Here is the question on your screen. The nurse is inserting an intervening urinary catheter to a 75 years old male client. While attempting to insert, they meet resistance in the urethra and are unable to pass the catheter into the bladder. Which action should the nurse take? Here are your four options. Think for yourself before I discuss which one is the answer. All right, guys, let's just discuss. Option number A applies less lubrication to the catheter tip. Do you guys think it's right? That is incorrect 
the catheter tip should always be lubricated to aid in insertion. However, lubrication will not help to pass the catheter through an area of resistance. It will make the catheter go easier. Look at the option number B. Start the procedure again using a large size catheter. What do you guys think? This is incorrect because a large catheter increases the risk for trauma to the bladder, neck and urethra. Look at the option number C here. Start the procedure again using cootie tip catheter. What do you guys think? That is correct. Prostate enlargement is common among older adult males. Often a cootie tip catheter will be used. This type of catheter makes it easier to pass through the enlarged prostate since it has a firmer and slightly bent tip. Let's just look at the option number D. Start the procedure again using a straight catheter. Option number D is incorrect because a straight catheter is used to obtain urine specimen and it would be any more easier to insert a regular catheter. So a Curie tip is a preferred one in this situation. So this is incorrect. I hope you guys are still learning and enjoying with me in this video. All right, guys, let's just do this question here. The nurse is inserting a urinary catheter for a female client. Upon inserting, the nurse notes that no urine is flowing out and the nurse suspects that the catheter is in vagina. Which steps should the nurse take next? Here are your four options. Think for yourself, pause the screen, and then we will discuss. All right, guys, look at the option number A. Withdraw the catheter from vagina, visualize the urethra, and insert it into the urethra. What do you guys think? This is incorrect because catheters should remain in vagina so that they don't reinsert into the vagina again and again. And the nurse would need to repeat the whole procedure again using sterile technique and insert a new catheter into the urethra. Option number B, leave the catheter in the vagina, clean the urinary meatus again and insert another catheter using a new sterile catheter kit. Well, this is correct. If the catheter goes into the vagina, the nurse should leave it in the vagina, then clean the urethral meatus again using another catheter kit. Reinsert the sterile catheter into the urethra, replacing the sterile gloves if they become contaminated. Then remove the catheter from the vagina after successful insertion of the second catheter. Let's just look at the option number C here. Withdraw the catheter from the vagina, clean it with a disinfectant fluid from the catheter kit and insert it into the urethra. What do you guys think? This is incorrect. The nurse should never remove the catheter and clean it and then reinsert it because you guys know catheterization is a sterile procedure. Look at the option number D here. Withdraw the catheter from the vagina, discard it, open a new catheter and catheter kit and begin the procedure again. What do you guys think? This is incorrect because catheter should remain in the vagina so that the nurse does not make the same mistake again. The nurse will need to perform the procedure again using sterile technique and once the catheter is inserted in the right spot, then remove the old one from the vagina and discard it. This is one of the very important questions tested a lot in NCLEX. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed learning clinical skill as well as NCLEX style question practice. That's what we do at FDNPC. We are always here to support the students and make sure you contact us if you have more queries. Please like and subscribe to our channel. And if you like this video, share it with your friends. Thank you very much.